So in prior chapters, I summarized how to build a Rack 2245 LoRa gateway, how to register that gateway on the Things Network, and how to build and test a node. I then shared an update on an antenna installation on my roof. I've since made a few improvements and confirmed that the installation is stable over time. So this chapter will review the overall design and installation for what is now a permanent gateway serving the Tucson, Arizona community. So for site selection, you obviously want to choose a location for your antenna that will give you good visibility of the areas you want to talk to with your nodes. Next, minimize the distance between your antenna and your gateway hardware. This can be tricky if your gateway is on your roof and you're running coax cable to your gateway box on the outside of your home. In my case, I didn't want to deal with drilling holes in my roof or walls to sneak cables through, so I traded that inconvenience for a longer cable length. That in turn will impact the power transmitted by my antenna, but on the bright side, LoRa is designed to work in a low power environment. Next, you'll want to place your gateway hardware within a relatively short distance of an outlet. Note that the official plugs used for Raspberry Pis don't extend more than 1.5 meters or about 5 feet. Running power through an extension cable or a longer lead might realize voltage drops that can impact the performance of your gateway. Next, your gateway needs to be within Wi-Fi range of your modem. Otherwise, the gateway won't be able to speak to the thing's network, leaving your nodes high and dry. Finally, if you place your gateway outside, make sure it's isolated from the elements. In my case, rain is an issue during the monsoon, but heat is also a challenge given that I live in the desert. So I built a small awning for the gateway, which is housed inside a UL certified box with silica gel for moisture prevention. I'll go over these and other considerations over the next few slides. Hey folks, so I decided to take a little jaunt up on top of my roof to see what kind of coverage I might get if I could set up a LoRa gateway or at least an antenna for a LoRa gateway up here. And you can see that from up here, I have a pretty good view of the valley, which would be fantastic for setting up a gateway. So purchasing an antenna is certainly one way to go, and Rack offers a nice selection with mounting hardware. But being a maker, I wanted to see if I could build my own antenna. There's an excellent video on building your own ground plane antenna published at this link that gave me the confidence to pursue this on my own. I won't go over all the details outlined in that video, but I will highlight this website that gives you design specs for your frequency of interest, which in my case is 915 MHz. And here's the completed antenna. The parts used for this included one of these N-type jacks, a 1 8 inch brazing rod cut to the appropriate lengths for the monopole and radiating elements, and both ring crimp and brass tubing for tying the elements together. And finally, a one inch slip PVC plug for mounting the antenna on a larger assembly designed for my tile roof. And this is just another view showing how everything is tied together to include four screws salvaged from an old toy that was being thrown out. Note that I did drill a hole in the plug to make room for the end type connector and also drilled some pilot holes in the cap for the screws which were secured with a little JB weld. Finally, I used one of these N1201SA analyzers to fine tune the antenna by trimming the monopole in order to match my target frequency of 915 MHz. This did require that I purchase one of these N male to SMA male connectors to match the female plug on the instrument. In order to figure out how I was going to mount this antenna to my roof, I visited my local roofing supplier and found a tile that was a close match to the one lining the top of my roof line. Purchasing this tile will make it easier to design a solution in my shop rather than having to climb up onto my roof. And here's the design I came up with, which essentially involves using the tile to estimate the taper on a four inch diameter piece of PVC, and then using a razor saw and a file to finish off the pipe so that it seats nicely on the tile. I then drilled a one and a quarter inch hole on the end cap for the pipe, which will help seat the antenna, and drilled another hole through the pipe itself so that I could insert a carriage bolt, which will serve to anchor the PVC 
through the use of a couple springs rescued from a broken dishwasher. And this is another view of how that carriage bowl can be used with springs on both sides to anchor the antenna to my roof without drilling any holes through the roof itself. With respect to mounting the antenna, here's a suite of diagrams showing how it's mounted on the 4-inch PVC end cap. The nice thing about this design is you can easily level things out side to side by inserting a shim under the PVC as well as forwards and backwards by simply moving the PVC over the tile. The tension from the spring will keep the PVC in place regardless of your refinements or the shim if it's needed. In order to hook up the antenna, I'll need to run coax from the N-type connector to my gateway. I found this cable on Amazon that was just about the right length with the end connectors already attached to avoid my having to splice anything together. The male N-type connector on the cable will work perfectly with the connector I selected for the antenna, but for the gateway, I needed to replace the pigtail to match the male coax connector on the cable. All these parts are listed in the description of this video, and I'll also mention that uh, the specifications for this cable are very similar to LMR400, which is what I had originally planned for this installation. And here's the mounted antenna with the extended cable running through a hole in the side of that 4-inch uh, PVC, as well as down the side of my roof line, tucked under some tiles to keep things from moving in the wind. Folks, and there you can see the uh, cable coming off the roof uh, to this little gateway on uh, on this ladder. This is just temporary, of course. I just want to see if everything's uh, hooked up and, and uh, connecting properly. Okay, and now I'm indoors, and uh, I just logged into the Things Network, and I brought up my gateways, and there you can see that it is, in fact, connected. So what that tells me is that uh, there is Wi-Fi coverage on the side of the house uh, where that gateway is uh, currently being tested. Okay, so the next thing to do is uh, check to make sure that that antenna is working properly. And, and the only way to do that is to actually test it out with a node. So this is my little DHT22 uh, hooked up to a Feather MO LoRa. Uh, and it's transmitting to the antenna that's up there on the top of my roof. So now we're going to go back inside, open up my applications, and see if that's working. There's my Feather MO application. And uh, let's look at the data. And yes, the feather weather is in fact talking to the antenna that's talking via coax cable to the gateway that's mounted on the side of the house, which in turn is talking to the thing's network via Wi-Fi coverage, which apparently is good enough where it's uh, currently placed. All right, folks, and here you can see the completed gateway installed on the side of my house. This is the warm side of the house. This is the side that gets the afternoon sun. And I know that that raspberry pie and that concentrator run pretty hot. So I had to basically build this little awning to keep it in the shade uh, during the hot part of the day and also keep the rain off of it. Uh, that, along with um, the little UL certified box, should keep things pretty dry. And there's some silica gel in there as well. This has been running now for, uh, for about three weeks. Haven't had any issues really, so I felt confident enough to uh, share this design with uh, all of you. In a prior video, I summarized how to estimate radio coverage for your LoRaWAN gateway installation. Please refer to that video if you'd like to learn more, but briefly, these are the parameters I included for estimating coverage for my home installation. And the resulting analysis suggests a fairly widespread coverage throughout the Tucson Valley for uh, my location, which has pretty good visibility. Having said that, I believe the estimated coverage might be a little over-optimistic, at least closer to my home, given that I live in a hilly part of town with lots of washes and relief. And here are a few photos of my neighborhood to give you an idea of the lay of the land, showing plenty of opportunities for signal loss in washes or behind homes. As such, this installation in my neighborhood will make a great test site for estimating coverage for this hardware within a desert foothills community 
hosting plenty of relief in homes that can introduce path losses. Along those lines, this gives you an aerial view of my neighborhood. And these are locations where I've tested coverage. In fact, I was able to send temperature and humidity data from nodes located at most of these markers while on a walk through my neighborhood. I've even gone as far as taking photos of the node pointing towards the gateway and then capturing screenshots of the associated telemetry results. I'll be summarizing this and other range experiments in a future video once I get a better handle on terms like data rates, signal to noise ratio, and RSSI. Needless to say, it's pretty exciting to know that we now have an outdoor antenna hooked up to a gateway with a pretty good visibility of the valley um, serving the Tucson community. So if you happen to live in Tucson and uh, you have a node out there and you happen to ping this gateway, I'd love to hear about it. If you wouldn't mind uh, posting a comment, I'd sincerely appreciate it. So if you're enjoying this series, please consider giving this video a thumbs up and subscribing for future updates. Thanks for watching.